it's that time again. Welcome to the best webinar in town. Human Web Live. Let's introduce your host from the windy city of Chicago. Currently sheltering in place, please welcome HumanWare's brand ambassador of blindness products, Peter Tucson. And from all the way across the pond, also sheltering in place, but doing so with everyone's favorite accent, please welcome HumanWare's Braille product manager, Andrew Flatry. I'm just never going to get tired of it. How's it going, everybody? Um, it's Peter Tusick, brand ambassador of Plinus products for Humanware, and I am with the one and only oh, Andrew Fletcheris. There he is, <laughs> coming in live. Good so morning, Andrew, good afternoon. Andrew and I are oh, good evening over there, right? It's good evening, everybody. I think yeah. so. So we are here again. Um, it is noon Eastern time um, here for another live webinar with Humanware. So remember, you can send your suggestions to Humanware live at humanware.com. Um, today, we're going to be looking at four sort of rapid fire pieces of the puzzle. Um, two of them have to deal with sort of visual content, so kind of the creating and presenting side of things. Um, and then we're going to look at the sort of email side. So we will spend a few minutes looking at how we can create a Google Slides presentation. We will then look at how we can present or view a PowerPoint presentation. And finally, we're going to throw it over to Andrew, who's going to show us uh, some of the benefits of using Keymail uh, in terms of shortcuts and that sort of thing. And then I will take over and we'll look at using the native Gmail app and some of its benefits, but really a, a lot of its kind of shortcomings when it comes to that sort of easy sort of one linear interface. So we will look at that. I am going to take over screen sharing, and I will do that by coming in here. And let me take this. We're going to share sound. And I've started screen share, and you should hear that. Mr. Andy, do you hear me? I can. I can. No. All right. We're going to go connect. Into connect. I'm going to mute my speech. Speech on demand. All right. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to start with. Google Slides. So I am on the main menu. I am going to come into the All Applications menu here by pressing the letter A. Braille to All Applications. And I am on All Applications. I'm going to press Enter or a cursor router key. Main menu All Apps. Amazon Shopping. And one of these days we will do some Amazon Shopping, but uh, I'm going to come down to Slides. So I'm going to press the letter S to move down to Slides. Screen mirror, screen leap, settings, sheets, serious slides. All right, we heard a bunch of apps there. I was using my next thumb key to come down. We are going to open Google Slides. Remember, this is an app that is not Google Assistant. Uh, for some reason, Google seemed to Google go. Assistant cool. main menu all apps. Uh, for some reason, this is not an app that uh, is installed right by by nature. You have to go into the Google Play Store and install Slides. It is no longer standard um, with Android eight and above. So when you get your BrailleNote Touch Plus, you will have to install Google Slides. On the original BrailleNote Touch, Google Slides was pre-installed. So keep that in mind. All right, I'm going to press enter. Slides. New presentation menu button. All right, and I would see here, I'm looking at, uh, I would have my screen up. I can move down and find a previously created or opened presentation or if something has been shared with me and so on. But I want to create a new presentation and that's what we're focusing on. So I'm going to press enter on the new presentation menu button. New presentation button. And it brings up, it's going to ask me what type of presentation I want. One item removed. So I could move in different places and I had deleted something previously, but if I... New presentation button. Press enter on the new presentation button, it will open up a new blank presentation. And now at this point... Untitled presentation. Canvas. All right, it places us on the canvas, and the canvas is where we put the objects for each slide. I'm going to create two slides here and show you how you can manipulate the type of slide you have. But what we want to do is when we first create a presentation, we will have a blank sort of title slide here. The canvas is where we put information. We put the information on our canvas. We need to make sure the proper slide is selected in the thumbnail view, which is above the canvas. So you will hear slide one of one, or when we add slide one of two, or two of four, or seven of 12, or whatever we have, we select the appropriate slide, and we will come down 
So we hear canvas, and then after canvas, if I press my next thumb key, I will hear the name of the first object. Centered title. And it says centered title. So again, in speech and braille, centered title. I'll press enter here. Centered title, selected. And I've selected this object. So now I have the object selected, and if I press enter again, I will go into the edit box for this object. Edit box. And I can New type line. in what I want to put on this uh, object. So the title of my presentation is going to be Fun Presentation. Right, so I typed in Fun Presentation. I can now press enter if I want to make another line here, but I don't. I'm going to press my next thumb key. Top left resize handle. And you will hear that there are these different resize handles and top middle resize handle, and you need to ignore all of this. These are not going to be usable for us as blind Braille users. We cannot manipulate the rotation and the sizing of these different handles. It will not work. But what I can do is I'm finished editing this object. So I'm going to press the letter D. Done. And come button. to the done button and press enter. Edit box done button. And now I'm done editing that object. I'm not done editing the slide that I'm on, but I'm done editing that particular object. So I'm going to come down to the bottom of my screen to look at the at the other objects that exist. And I have two of them on this slide, and I can hear what they are in a moment. But I'm going to press four, five, six with space to come to the very bottom. Bottom subtitle. So here's my subtitle. Again, if I press my previous thumb key, I would see. Rotation, handle. rotation handles here. If I come all the way up with bottom my right, thumb bottom key, middle, bottom mid, mid, top, top, center title, we would find canvas, center, the center title. title, fun presentation. Right. So we currently hear selected. That, that is the currently selected object is the centered title, fun presentation. Now I have all those resize handles, but at the very bottom you will find the other objects. They are below the resize sort of rotation handles that exist. If I press four, five, six with space, let's come down and find that next object. Bottom, subtitle. Here's my subtitle, and I'm going to press enter to select the object. Subtitle, selected. And I'm going to press enter again to actually come into this edit box. Edit box, All right. new line. And now here, so again, this is my subtitle. I might say uh, the title we had as, as fun presentation, but I might say presenter. Right, so I put in presenter colon Peter Tusick and I press my previous thumb key. Subtitle. Or my next thumb key because I want to leave the edit box and then press the letter D to say done. Done button. Press enter. And done button. And now I'm done editing that object. So I've now edited two objects on this first slide. And this is very, very important because I'm not done editing the presentation, but I'm done editing these objects. So again, we had a title text box, we had a subtitle text box, we were able to select the object and then press enter or a cursor router key again to actually get into the appropriate text box. All right, let's say I want to add a slide to this presentation. So if I press the letter A, Alignment, we'll come Align down slide button. to the add slide button. And what will happen is, if I press the enter here, it's going to ask me what type of slide I want to add. Add slide, title slide. All right, now I have a choice of options here. Do I want to add a title slide? Section header. And here are the different types of title slides here. Title and body. Okay, title and body. Title and two columns. Do I want to add a title and columns. Title only. Just a title. One column text. One column text and so on. Main point. So what I'm going to do for the next slide. Section title um, and description. There are different pages Main here, point. One choose, title only. Let's just do. Um, title and two. Title and body. Let's do another title and body slide because I'll show you how we can change that if we need to. So I'm going to press enter on title and body. Untitled presentation. Right. Add slide. Now, button. you will hear as I press my next thumb key. Canvas. Above the canvas. So here's our canvas. We would see our objects below this. But if I press my previous thumb key and we look at this, what we have. Add slide two of two. Title. Body. Layout. Title and body. Right. Two objects on the page. So we hear that this is slide two of two. We also, if I press my previous thumb key again and look at the previous thumbnail, remember these are in a list. You will hear. Slide one of two. Center title, fun presentation, subtitle, presenter, Peter Tuchik, layout, 
Title slide. Two objects on the page. So again, we could press enter here and select that slide for editing, or I'm going to select slide two of two here. So let's press my next thumb key. Slide two of two. Press enter and it will Title. be selected. Now Body. I can use my next thumb key and come find that object below the canvas. So let's go find the title for slide two. Add slide canvas. Title. Okay, we know that's the object. I press enter. Title. Selected. Let's come in again with enter and come into the text box. Edit box. New line. All right, and now we're going to say, oh, I don't know. Let's call this agenda. Okay, so this is my agenda slide. So the title is agenda. Now, I could select this and go bold it or underline it or all of those different things if we know where we want to go. We need to do some exploring. But once I have text in this box, it could be manipulated. Again, I've typed the word agenda. I press my previous thumb key. Title. And now I press D. Agenda. Because I'm done editing this object. Currently selected. Done. Button. Right, so I'm done editing this object. I press enter. Edit box. Done. Button. Boom. And it keeps me on the done button because that would be if I were done editing the presentation, I could press enter here again. But I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom. Let's find our next uh, object below those rotation handles. Bottom. Body. Here's the body, right? So I want to put, let's put, uh, let's put some bullets in the body. The agenda. We're going to have three things and I'll show you how to bullet them. And the same thing kind of applies when we're working in a Google Doc. I press enter to select this object. Body selected. And then I press enter again and come into the actual text box. Edit box. All right. New line. Our agenda is first. Dot, dot, s uh, substituted. H. Substituted. Dot, dot, H. Okay. N. First, we're going to have fun. Substituted. I'm going to press enter. S New line. We're going to write second. All right, this is the name of the game. First, we're going to have fun. Second, we're going to have more fun. We're going to come down. New and line. thirdly, let's write third. Dot, 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 two, five, substituted, like dot, eight, sub, substituted the, dot, 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 two. All right. Now, substituted. You might be asking why it's saying substituted. I don't have an answer for you. So if your hand is up or you want, want to know why, it's just the way that it's translating the Braille directly into this third party app. So again, you're not getting speech here. Um, there was a time you were. It's just the way that the Braille is kind of handled. But let's say I want to bullet these items. So I, I did number them and I could have not done that. I could have just put, um, you know, the actual just have fun, have more fun, have the most fun, and then bulleted them, but I did put first, second, third. The point here is we're writing multiple lines of text. I can select all of this text by pressing a full cell with enter. So if I select everything, which I will do, full cell with enter. Sub first, have fun second, have more fun third, have the most fun, selected. And it says that it's selected. And I press my previous thumb key. Body. Okay, we leave first, the edit box. Fun and now I want to press the letter B. Bold button, so bold not check. Our selection. Bullets button, not check. Or we could, and in this case, if we press enter on bullets, it will turn this into a into bullet points. Checked. So now I've bulleted those three options. So again, you can do some of this manipulation. This is a third-party app. You're going to have to do some exploring, um, and really learning what what might be and might what might not be possible. Um, some things are not doable. Many things are, but if I come down to Done, I can finish editing this object. Done, button. Okay. Edit ball, done, button. All right, now I'm done editing. I've created two slides. Now, again, let's just say in theory that I wanted to, oh, I don't know, change slide one, the layout of slide one or something. If I find it in my thumbnail list, so I'm gonna press letter S to find our slide. Start slideshow, strike it through, but slide one of two. Okay. Center title. Now, I found slide one of two. If I press enter on it in the list, so where it says one of two, I press enter. I've now slide selected one of two. slide one of Fun two. Fun presentation. And now I could go edit those objects, as we saw before, the title and the subtitle. But if I open the context menu, I can come down to something called selection control, where I can, because I have the slide selected. So now I can manipulate that selection. So if I press M with space to come into the menu, pop-up window, viewed entries and exits. Right, this is kind of where now I can press S and come down to selection control. Show speaker and selection control. And now remember, Open I, have that, I have that full first slide selected. So if I come in here, you'll see what I can do with it. Cut. Right, I could cut it so that I could move and, and select somewhere else and paste it. 
Copy. I can copy this slide and put it somewhere else. Paste. And then if I had something cut or copied, I could paste it. Add comment. I could put a comment on here and so on. Speak select, speak selection form delete. I could delete this slide. So if you have a slide you want to get rid of, you would select it in the thumbnail list and then come in here and delete it. Change layout. And I can also change the layout of my selected slide. So remember how we saw title or title only or title and bullets and so on. So again, you can change the layout. Notice that none of these have shortcuts. This is not a Keysoft application. These do not have custom Braille shortcuts. This is the third party Google Slides Notification app. downloading. So I just press backspace with enter to make that be quiet. But if I wanted to change the layout or delete the slide, I could do that here. So again, a very basic, basic introduction into what's doable when you come into Google Slides. You can create basic presentations. Um, you're not going to be beautifying these things. You need to, even at HumanWare, when I create presentations for conferences, um, I will put the content that I need. I might find pictures or find different things and put the images in and so on, but I do not have the ability to customize how they look or what, where things are perfectly aligned or the different pieces. I might need to do that using a computer uh, or I would run it by one of my sighted colleagues um, to help me with that. All right, the last piece of this, you probably want to title your presentation. If I come up to the top, Top presentation title. Untitled presentation. Right, I pressed my next thumb key and Rename I got to the button. presentation title here, and I could come in and name this presentation. So if I press enter, edit box, fun presentation. All right. Rename presentation. It will, it will be named whatever the first you know slide title is, which in this case is fun presentation. So I could call this. Um, let's call it test presentation. And you deleted T dots three four. Test. Okay, so test presentation. I press my next thumb key. Cancel. We'll have a cancel button. button. Okay. We'll have an okay button. button. So if I press enter on okay. Test presentation. Presentation title. Right. Test presentation. So now I've named that presentation. Rename button. And I could rename it here if I needed to. Okay. If I press the letter D, button. I would go, I'm sorry, not D, but if I, if I press my triangle, I would come out of this and back up into slides. So for all intents and purposes, I'm, I'm done with this and I'm done editing this. I've created it, but I could come back in and select one of those slides from the thumbnail and actually paste it or cut it or manipulate those objects in some way. You will notice this is not a full version of Google Slides. This is a mobile sort of uh, application. So please keep that in mind. If you need to do heavy lifting, you're probably going to want to employ your computer. Okay, coming to the main menu, let's talk about presenting. Main menu. So. Within Google Slides, we are not able to present. Um, Google, we need, we need to get some work with them on fixing the presentation view. It works when we're not connected to an external monitor, but the problem is as soon as we connect to something, the presentation view doesn't work because the speakers portion of it is not accessible on the mobile side. However, if we want to present a presentation, we can do so in the PowerPoint app. So if you're in the Play Store and you download Microsoft PowerPoint, even with the free version, which is what I'll show you, you are able to present PowerPoints efficiently. Um, so if you had created something in slides and you wanted to present it to your class, you would save it as a PPTX presentation. Um, and then you would go in and, and you could present that using the PowerPoint app. Now, I am going to show you a PowerPoint that I had created and used for a conference back in October of last year uh, in California. And it was an O&M conference and I'll kind of show you how, because I, I always run my presentations off of my Braille note because I love to have that Braille feedback. I don't want to have something in my ear. And sometimes I've had issues with, even with the presentation view, um, utilizing JAWS and so on. So I like to use this because it's an all-in-one sort of solution. I am going to come into the file manager and find a PowerPoint file that I have saved. So if somebody shared this with you through Drive or put it on a thumb drive and you copied it into your Braille note, you can come and open this in PowerPoint, right? So you need to download PowerPoint from the Play Store. I'm going to come into the file manager. File manager. Going to press key enter. files. Key files. Okay. Three public now, dot docs. Press my triangle. Alarms folder. Come into my storage drive. So remember, D with space brings you up to drive selection. Drive selection. We're going to choose storage. Go alarms folder. And now my PowerPoints are living in the PowerPoint folder. Very, very. Pictures for podcast PowerPoints folder. All right. So I have a PowerPoints folder where I have some different presentations. Going to press enter. 
Asia 2019. All right, so I have my ATA 2019 presentation. We're going to come down. CAOMS 2000. OMS, so the California O&M uh, presentation that I gave. And I'm going to press enter here. <laughs> open with PowerPoint. And it's going to ask me what I want to use to open this because it is a PPTX presentation. I want to open this using PowerPoint. So I'm going to say just once. Oh, wait, just once. Button. And we're going to open this in PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Sl slide one. CAO. All right. Now, what I need to do once it opens in order to present this, because I could look at these slides in kind of a thumbnail or a list view, but again, when you're presenting visually, you don't want everyone seeing every single slide because that would make no sense. It might make sense to you uh, or me as a blind person because I'm looking at one line at a time, but the sighted person is seeing the entire screen. So I need to put this in presentation view. I'm going to press the letter P. Present button. Find the present button, right? And I'm going to press enter, and then I will be in the slideshow. Slideshow. All right. Now, there are a couple of ways that I can navigate this. So I can use my next thumb key to look at the objects. Slide one dash C title text box. CAOMS 2019 right. edit box. So here was the CAOMS 2019 edit box. I can read the content here. If I press my next thumb key again, I'll see the actual subtitle, subtitle. text box. Planet, Braille it, track it, complementing traditional orientation and mobility skills with technology. Right. So presenter, Peter Tuchek, this edit was box. My subtitle on this slide, right? So again, a very basic sort of slide, but I could use my inner thumb keys. Generally, when I do this, I don't have speech on because I'm presenting in front of a big room or a lot of people or I'm running slides for something. So I would use my inner thumb keys to read this these objects or whatever content is inside these text boxes. When I'm ready to move to the next slide, I'm going to do so using the touch screen. So I will turn touch braille off by pressing my outer thumb keys. Touch braille off. And I will swipe left on screen with two fingers. So I need to lift up my keyboard and swipe left on screen with two fingers to move to the next slide. And what it will do is it will move me to my next slide. Now, hold on. Content oh, place. There we go. Why is this not? Uh, it's not doing it. It's not behaving. Content awesome. placeholder. I might have to. I might have to move to a different presentation. I didn't. Uh, oh, here we go. So what this will do as I move, I will consistently kind of float through my various slides. If I come up to the top. Top. I can see my Content title. Title text so box on. slide four dash how and when to introduce. Slideshow right. control. And I can read through my content. So let's go two fingers to the right. We'll move me back a slide. Here's slide three, which is my agenda, and so on. Again, you want to use those two fingers to slide, and then your next thumb key, or you can touch on screen with one finger to actually feel your different objects. So if I use one finger on screen right now. Content placeholder. How and when to, to top, title text the title. box. Agenda. The agenda. Edit box. And then my text box. Content placeholder. How and when to introduce tech right. tools in the toolbox. These are bullets. When is it too much? Importance of Braille. Planning a route. Previewing our route. Walking slash executing our route. Plan. Braille. Track in action. Edit box. So again, that edit box contained all of these bullets. So I could read through that with my inner thumb keys and then move to the next slide by using two fingers to the left or the previous slide by using two fingers to the right. Again, a very basic way for me to move through slide by slide. What we saw with Google Slides is I can create presentations, but I cannot present them. This version of PowerPoint, I can present because it's the free version, but I cannot create. So again, two sorts of pieces here. And this has to do kind of with the inaccessibility of the third party apps. So if you wanna create a presentation, you're going to use Google Slides. If you want to actually present to your peers, your parents, your friends, your coworkers, you're going to do that using PowerPoint. So you would save your Google Slides presentation as a PPTX presentation, and you would then be able to present it. All right. Now, I am going to bring it back to the main menu. Main menu. I am going Contacts. to give up Key list. my wonderful screen sharing privileges and throw them over to Mr. Andrew Flatris all the way across the pond. Well, thanks very much, Peter. That was fun and even more fun.
Uh, I have to say that was uh, the learning curve. That was a learning oh, experience fun and more me. fun. <laughs> yeah, that was a learning experience for me. So it was great. A great presentation now on how to to create slides and, and present slides. Uh, I know there's been a lot of questions about that. So uh, great work there, Peter. So um, over to me now. What I'm going to be talking about is emails uh, using our key man application. This was on the request from um, from you guys. Uh, this is something that you wanted to continue to get. Uh, um, instructions on what's a, a webinar about key mail still uh, we did cover some of the key mail functionality in some of our previous webinars but I'm going a bit more a little bit more detail here just tell you a bit more about key mail uh, let me just quickly set up my screen and get a screen share going talk amongst yourselves <laughs> okay Sorry, my audio was muted. What we're about to see is kind of the benefit of that linear sort of setup in terms of why we build the apps that we do for our Braille users and for those of us who use more of a linear sort of setup as opposed to the native apps that sometimes can come with devices. Um, and, you know, as we move forward, that would even apply to some of the things we just saw with PowerPoint and slides, right? How can we make some of those things easier in the future so we don't have to rely uh, sometimes on those third-party apps. So I think that will come into play directly with this sort of example looking at email. Okay. Just bear one moment. It's not coming through on my PC yet. Uh, I, I think... I think Andrew just wants me to do this part. He's <laughs> I'm trying to check it out in the live webinar. If, if you need me to, I can. It's, it's not a problem. Do you Sometimes, want me to, do you want me to take uh, it? Oh, no, it's, it's happening. It's, aha, here we go. Faith and confidence, baby. Okay. There's that British accent that everyone loves. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's okay. not through yet. It's not through, no. Okay. Let's get this through. There you go. Now you got it. Internet. All right, I'm muting. There we go. Awesome. Okay, we're up and running. Okay, so key mail. So from that main menu, uh, and if you're not at that main menu section, then you can, uh, two ways to get back to that main menu. There's the all six dots with spacebar, and there's the home button at the very center of that device at the front. It's the circle button. That will take you back to that main menu screen. From here, I'm going to press the letter E to take me to He's my email. Press. Uh, and again, cycling through the first letter navigation. So pressing the letter email, E again email. will take me to my email. So I'm going to press enter on email. Add account. Now, once you've gone into your key mail, now this is, of course, if you've set up your key mail. We're not going to talk about how you set up your email at this stage on this webinar. Uh, this is going through once you have created your, your uh, email account. But if you haven't got... Um, an email account added. At this point, when you go into Keymail, you will be prompted to add your details. So the first question. Andy, can you turn asked. your volume up like one on your actual touch, just one or two clicks with that yeah, foreign enter? Sure. Louder, louder. Is that better? There yep. you go. Yeah. Okay, cool. Accessible um, volume set to sixty-five percent. Okay, so uh, yeah, once you click on um, either the fir first experience on Keymail, it'll be prompted to add in your email account. So you'll be prompted email address and credentials of your password and so on. Uh, but this is assuming that I've already added my account, which I have. I have actually got two accounts. Um, and just to let you know, you have more than two accounts. What happens is you'll get a little setting at the very bottom, uh, which is called current accounts. As I pan forward through my current account andrew.footers at gmail.com okay it'll allow me to to select this and will give me two options account selector andrew.footers at gmail.com and so it will prompt me which account do i want to use because you can have more than one email address here i have my two email addresses i'm going to select my gmail account at this stage current account andrew.footers at gmail.com okay so now that i've selected my Gmail account, and anything that I do, if I go to my read, if I go to new message, it's always going to be from that account. So it's really important to know that what account that you have selected if you have got more than one. The last thing you want to do is send an email address to someone from a wrong account. Okay, so now I'm going to send a new message, and there's going to be two ways I'll show you this. The first way is through this key mail menu. There's a nice uh, uh, available option in this key mail menu list called new message. So I'm going to press the letter N. New message. 
and press enter to select. To edit box, compose. Computer Braille is required. Now the first option you get there is to, to the to address, the to field. Who do you want to send this to? And bear in mind, it is in Computer Braille. So depending if you're using NEMIF, uh, sorry, US Computer Braille or UK Braille, remember that at sign is different. The at sign in, in uh, US Computer Braille is, uh, just remind me, is it 4-6, Peter, I think? Dot four no. with backspace. Dot four with backspace. And with the UK computer brow, it's the, the court. So that starts two, three, four, and six with backspace to add that uh, to add the at side. So at this point here, I can simply type in the full address if you know the full address. Um, alternatively, there are other options. If there's a, an email address that may be sitting in my contact uh, list. And uh, again, there's a couple of ways to do that. So I can press my left previous thumb key, which takes me back button. to select recipient button. Now, if I press enter here, it's going to bring up my contacts list where I can then select the person I want to email. Now, let's do that. Uh, so here's I've got a awesome. big block contact list. And I, from here in the contact list, I can press my space F command to find a contact if I need to. So if I want to email Peter, I can do. I can just find for Peter. Um, or I could just go down the list and, and simply Thomas, go Andrew, through. Andrew Pet Barry G. Uh, let's email Barry G, whoever this is. <laughs> um, we can select. Edit box. Barry Compose. Select and recipient. And it automatically button. puts Computer that required. email address into my to field, but my focus remains still on the add recipient button. That's, of course, if I want to add more than one people. Um, the alternative thing, what you can do, and was shown in our previous webinars, is to bring up the recipient suggestion. But the reason why I'm showing you this to, to reach for, from your contacts list is that it may not be uh, an email in your recipient suggestion. Now, the recipient suggestion goes by from people that you have sent emails to previously. Okay, so if it's not coming up to, you know, if you're, if you're concerned that you have an email address in your contact list and it's not coming through from your recipient suggestion, it may be because you've not sent uh, an email to them before. Um, but the other method here. Co uk to edit box. Barry at possible co uk. Computer braille is required. So I'm just going to backspace all that out. Be be deleted. So the other method is, is just is the recipient suggestion. So if I wanted to email this stage, maybe Peter, you need to enter at least about three or four characters uh, to start that. So I'm just going to do. Okay. Now, once you've done that, the command to bring up your recipient suggestion is backspace, space, and the letter E together. So backspace, space, and the letter E. And the reason why we're pressing the space is because we are using computer brow. Email. Peter Wilcox less than Peter dot Wilcox. Now, this stage is going to bring out all the recipient suggestions that have Peter in that uh, in that email. And again, I can select any one of those. Um, let's just P P Peter at soundlinks.com less than Peter at soundlink to edit box. Peter one. at soundlinks. I'm just going to add that one there. I'm not going to add Peter himself. Um, so once I've emailed, once I've done this email, I could then press enter. Subject edit box. And it then gives me the subject. If at all you want to add in CCs and blind copies too, then you can use your left uh, previous thumb key or your next thumb keys to plus navigate CC slash to the button. plus CC button. So at this point here, CC edit box. Computer Braille is required. Okay, if you want to sit, copy someone else in, you can. If you want to blind copy someone into, you can. And the difference between the BCC and the CCT is that anyone that you put in that BCC will not know who you sent that email to. So it's great if you want to send a, a party invitation. You don't want to know that, um, want people to know who's coming or not. Okay. Um, I'm not going to send, I'm not going to include any email address at this stage, but just showing you that you can add a CC and a BCC. Select BCC, BCC, edit box, subject, edit box. So I'm going to carry on pressing my next thumb key to go to the subject box, and I'm going to press enter to subject, start that edit, edit box, field. End of field. And at this point, my cursor is now showing my dot seven and eight. Now, this is another method of knowing that you're no longer in computer brow. So again, a question that we always get asked in support is, well, how do I know if I'm in computer brow or in literary brow? And the biggest, biggest um, evidence of that is check your cursor. If your cursor is showing both dot seven and eight, that means that you're in literary brow. If it's just showing dot eight, 
then it means it's you're in computer braille. So at this point here, I can just type in literary braille if I want to. Um, so I'm going to type in test and press enter. Compose email edit box. Okay, and now I'm in the compose edit box. At this stage, I could again type in literary braille and type in whatever I like. Hello. Hello. A O W. How A R E R Y. Dots two three dots dots two three six U. Okay, and you can type in whatever you want. Again, remember to put in at the end. New line. New line. T T dots T E A N K S. Thanks. Space K and delete dot T deleted. T H A N K S. New line. Dot A N D R E W. Andrew. Okay. So before I send this email, perhaps maybe I want to add an attachment. And again, there's, there's a couple of ways to add attachments. Um, you can directly go to the file manager and, and share the file if you want to, to send that as an attachment. Alternative, you're already in the email address here. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna press my contextual menu command, space with the letter M. Space with M will bring up my Context contextual menu. menu. Send message, backspace with this. Here, there will be an option to attach file, so I can press the letter A. Attach file. And press enter. Key files. Drive selection. Storage. Now, this is where it brings you into your file management. Again, last week, we, we showed you how to, to navigate efficiently in the file manager. So remember, to get back to your drive selection, you could press that space for letter D, and you'll be back where I am currently at the moment. I'm going to select storage. Go to alarms folder. I'm going to go to my documents folder. So Sign folder. Have, should have some documents stuff folder. There. Exam document one. Docs. And document there's an exam two. folder. Doc, exam dot docs. Exam document. There we go. I'm going to send that as my attachment. Compose email edit box. Compose. Now that attachment has been now tied on to my current email. And again, I'm in my edit box of my compose. So I, I can type in again, please refer to my attachment if I need to. Okay. Now I'm ready to send. At this stage, um, the send message, again, if you're not sure of any of these commands that we've gone through is in that contextual menu, that space with M. But if you're confident, you know what the, the, send, com the send message is, it's backspace with the letter S. I'm not going to do that because this Peter guy <laughs> will receive this and will not know what it, where it's from. So, uh, but backspace and S is the command that will allow you to send that email. Okay. Alert, unsave changes. Do you want to discard, discard that for now? Message discarded. New message. So that was one way of sending an email. The other way of sending an email is if you're in the read. So if you go to read. Email. Braille is at Google top. Blind check at groups. Okay. Now, if you're already in your inbox, um, then you can simply type in the command space with the letter N for new. Space with the letter N will bring up that exact same dialog box that we was previously in. So let's do that. Space and letter N for November. To edit box. Compose. Computer Braille is required. Okay, so again, you can fill in all of your two fields, copy two, blind copy two, subject and compose email, if you are already in your Notifications, inbox. preparing three for Okay, I'm just gonna exit out. Email, blind check out. So now I'm in my current inbox, and this is where you'd need to be if you want to read all of your emails that come through to your inbox. Um, if, however, you want to change different folders, so this is something else we'd like to cover, so maybe there are some emails sitting in new in different folders that you've moved, you can select that by pressing enter with B. Enter with B will give you your folder, folder selection. Inbox 88. Now from here, you can use your next phone key to navigate through and first letter to go through all of your folders that have been created or associated to this account. Please note, at this stage, we can't create new folders in Keymail. I know that is a big request. And I know that's probably going to be a, a question that we'll get asked here, Peter. Is how, oh, yeah. How can you do this? Um, it is something that we are looking at. Um, but at the moment, the way of creating your new folders would be, have to be done from the server side. So if you've got a Gmail account, my recommendation is you'd log into Gmail and you can create new folders that way. But at the moment, in Keymail, you, you're unable to do that. Yep. And if you have an exchange account, which we fully support exchange accounts in Keymail, you could do that on the exchange side as well. Um, and those folders will sync. I think this, you know, and, and that is something this enter with B command is a quick way to get to your drafts. It's a quick way to get to your outbox or your sent folder. Um, and sometimes you have things in different folders. So. 
Okay, right, so I'm just going to briefly go through some other commands that are really useful in the inbox. So if you want to delete emails, okay, so there may be a few emails that you want to delete. You can mark individual emails. So if you want to mark your individual emails, you can press backspace with the letter L. So as I press backspace and L, okay, once you've gone through all the emails that you want to delete, then you simply do the backspace lower G. That's the most common command that we use on the Braille Note to touch and touch plus. Deleting files, deleting folders, and deleting emails. Backspace with lower G. That's backspace with dots two, three, four, and six. Netflix conversation unread new arrival. Netflix conversation unread. Okay, and that's then deleted those emails that I've that I've just marked. And again, you can actually delete individual ones. You don't have to mark them. So I could actually press. Uh, on this new new arrival for Netflix, uh, backspace lower G again. Do you know the conversation on red twenty? Do you know okay. the conversation on red twenty percent off? And so on. If you want to reply, move emails, add sender to contacts. Again, I'm going to quickly go through this. Uh, I'm not going to take it too much time. Do you know so the let's conversation choose. On red Do you know the conversation on red twenty? Anglian water. We've been Anglian water. Anglian, wa Anglian web yesterday. So I had some problems with my water yesterday. So Anglian Water sent me an email to say there are some problems in my area. Uh, any, in any case, let's say I want to reply. You need to go into the email. So what I did there is I pressed enter to go into the actual email. From that, you could read the email. You can reply. You can delete. You can move the email to a different folder if you wish. And you can add that sender to the contact. So if it's a new email from a friend or a relative or a student, you can add that sender to your contact address. Um, so to reply, again, um, ways of replying, backspace with that letter R, if you want to reply just to the individual person. If it includes multiple users there, maybe there's a lot of people in the C field, the copy field, you may want to reply all, and that command is backspace with the letter a for all. If you want to move emails or if you want to add the sender to the contact list, all of this is achievable from that contextual menu. But again, you will need to be in the actual email. So now that I'm in my email of Anglian Water, I'm going to press space with the letter M. Context menu. Reply. Backspace with R. And here are those commands that we just mentioned. Reply. Backspace with R. Reply all. Backspace reply with all. A. If you want to forward your email. Forward. Backspace with F. Delete backspace with dots two, three, five, six. And there's the delete command that we just previously went through. Mark and move to. And there's the move to function. So if I want to move this to a different uh, email folder, I can press enter there and it will allow me to select which folder. Add center to contacts. And add center to the contacts. So what this will do is it will bring up your contacts list. It will add the, uh, the email address into the email field. All that you require is just to type in the name and then hit the save button. But it just gives you a quick, a quick introduction here of what, what other things you can do within Keymail. Uh, I'll finish it off to move to. Let's move, move this. Enter. I'll move Alert. to. Move to. Cancel. OK. And I'm going to move this to my important folder. Move to. Google, Google, Google Mail. Google Mail. Divided by important. And press enter. Keymail. Do you know the conversation on red 20% off sleep? Okay, and that's now moved to my important folder. So if I want to review that again at a later st stage, enter with B to open my bookmark. Choose folder. Inbox and in 85. Navigate to my important folder. Bottom. Choose folder. Okay. Draw out sent. Google flight mortgage. Flight sent. Delete deleted message. Google mail. Google mail. Oh, you should go in the mortgage folder, Andy. Oh, no, I'm not going on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can click on important here, but I'm not going to go into important because I don't know what's in there. <laughs> this is the problem with, uh, we were trying to get a test account working and we had some issues. So Andrew's graciously choosing to show us his personal mailbox, uh, which, which yeah. definitely is not ideal. And I will not be emailing anyone back if anyone emails me on this one. Okay? <laughs> no, that's always my caveat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at that point, I can choose my folder that I want to go into it. But I'm going to exit out, press space E. So just to recap on a few things, um, how to send a new email, uh, two ways. In Keymail, there's a new message option uh, that will prompt you with the uh, computer brow, type in the email address, or you can choose from your contact list. Or you can start to type in a few characters and then bring up your recipient suggestion by pressing backspace space with the letter E.
You can attach files to the email. Once you're in the email, remember to press space for M, open up that contextual menu, and then you can select attach file, which will then take you to your file management, and you can select the file that you want to attach. And to send the message, backspace with the letter S will send. And then briefly, quickly, reply in emails, backspace R to reply, reply all, backspace with A for all. And if you want to move emails, add center to the contacts, that's when you have to be in the actual email itself and press the space and M, open up the contextual menu again. How do I do that, Peter? Oh, dude, you're, you're spot on, man. Come on. Come Give on. me Faith time. And confidence. <laughs> There's 15 minutes left to answer some Q&A. Oh, it's, it's back to I'm you, gonna, actually, well, isn't gonna, it? Yeah, I'm going to throw it over to some Gmail for a few minutes and show the native Gmail app. I know um, the question was even asked on the chat. What about the native Gmail? Uh, if, if, and again, you know, it was sometimes schools won't unblock ports to Gmail. Generally, the ports aren't the issue. The issue is more so on enabling IMAP or it's going to be on uh, enabling less secure app access to those Gmail accounts. If you have an account that they will not budge on, um, there are, I will show the Gmail app and kind of how we can work with it. So let me start my share and we are going to share my screen and we're going to share the sound all right and i'm going to come back into full screen. Zoom. Connect. Connect full screen space. all right space. Speech on demand. okay so at this point i will show you the native gmail app and what you'll see is there are some pieces of this that are very usable there are some things that require a lot of kind of running around and, and sort of that you won't you won't have braille shortcuts uh, you will have first letter navigation but there are some things that are not going to be doable. So I'm going to come into all applications. Speech on. My speech on. Main menu all apps. And I'm going to come. Amazon shopping. Down to. Showing Gmail. items wanted. So I'm going to press the letter G for Gmail. Gmail. Press enter. Showing items 39 to 45 of 113. 113 apps. Okay. Gmail. Now. This is, a this is a test. What happens is when you open Gmail, generally you will be placed in the most recent message you received. This is a humanware uh, test account that I have. And I've signed up for some newsletters and Chicago real estate and some other things um, just to have some messages in here. But the message, you, you have a lot of things going on. There's a lot of sort of clutter and sort of different parts of the screen that you need to kind of learn how to inter interact with if you want to use this. What you can do is if you're looking for kind of that message list. You can press L with space to come to the top of your screen. Top. All inboxes. Button. And use your next thumb key to come down until you see the word primary. Social promotions. But okay. composed search may open navigation signed in as race primary. Okay, so when you see the word primary, not primary button or anything like that, after where it says your account name, you will then see messages in your inbox. So if I press my next thumb key. Peter Tuchek, this is a test. The attachment is here. Right. And we will see that I have set myself an attachment, which we'll get to in a second. I will then see the attached file as my next option. Document. Steps on how to emboss from your Braille No Touch Plus via Bluetooth. And that's a Microsoft Word document about embossing via Bluetooth uh, from your Braille Note Touch Plus to one of the new embossers. But if I press my next thumb key, I'd see more messages in my inbox. Zillow. Move and ready. 2520 on Red Zillow. 60,006 on Red Google. Critical security alert. Right. So now let's just say this: there was a critical security alert when Andrew and I were trying to get into these accounts. Um, and for some reason we weren't able to and I, we just did not have time because we had lots of other things going on. But if I wanted to get into this message and delete it, if I press enter here, I will be brought into the message web view. Critical security alert. Showing item four now, of 19. What happens is I'm brought into the subject. If I want to actually look at the contents of the message, and this is where this app gets, can be very confusing, you have to go into the web view. To get into the web view, because right now I'm up above the web view, if I want to get into it, I need to press either dots five, six with enter, or my right and next thumb key at the same time. This command is specific to the touch plus. Web view. And it will say web view, and now I can actually read the message with my inner thumb keys or use my next thumb key. A uh, graphic. Google logo underscore color underscore error underscore red underscore sign and attempt was blocked. Right. And I think. 
Anonymous underscore profile underscore human where one zero adds someone just used your password to try to sign into your account from a non Google app. So I'm just saying, all right, Google block them. That's crazy, whatever, you know, and I can go and review my accounts and things. If I hit L, I would move to the next link or B to the next button because remember, I am in a web view. But if I want to delete this message, I have to leave the web view. So I have the message open. I need to get out of this web view. So I can either press my right and next thumb keys at the same time or dots five, six with enter to get out of this web view. And then I can press the letter D document and move steps to delete. The delete button. And you won't hear it say button or link or anything. It is not labeled, but I will find delete and I can press enter here and get rid of this message. So again, if I'm in the web view and I press D, it's not going to find delete. I have to be out of the web view, the message web view in order to find delete. So I'll press enter on delete and away it goes. Security alert. One deleted. Right, and I get one deleted. Showing item four of and 18. And now again, it's deleted that message. So I can work with some of those. You can, you know, again, if I open up a message, let's come to, let's just say, again, it can be a little hard, but I want to find my first message. Come to the top of my screen. Use my next thumb key top. to come down. This website, Peter. Peter Tuchik, so Brendan. This would be the message from myself. This is the first message in my inbox. And if I wanted to reply to this message, if I press R right now in the web view, nothing happens because there's no radio buttons or anything in here. I have to leave the web view and then press the letter R. Reply and then I can come button. to the reply button and press enter. So again, you wanna make sure that when you're looking for those options, you are out of that web view. If you're not, it's going to be very difficult. You'll also run into some issues with saving attachments. So in Keymail, there is a command which is backspace with the letter O that will quickly open the attachments view so you can save your attachment into the downloads folder. With the Gmail app, they don't give you that sort of option. What you can do though, if you have a file with an attachment, so let's uh, an email with an attachment, I'm going to come find my message in my list. Top. Primus Procon Search Mail. It opened up. Okay, sorry about that everyone. Uh, we had some technical difficulties there. We just cut off do apologize. Let's see if we can get uh, Peter back in. I think what we'll do whilst we wait for Peter is uh, if anyone's got any questions, um, it'd be a good time to ask now. So uh, by all means, if you can answer through the Q&A again. Um, if you didn't have any questions answered, please, uh, you'll need to uh, put that back into the Q&A as, as they've been removed. And uh, if you want to raise your hand again, please do. And we'll start some Q&A sessions. Okay, so let's go to, uh, we have Corey Andrews. Hello, Corey Andrews, how are you? Hello. Hey there. Hello. Hi, Curry. Hi. I'm sorry. I've been having technical problems. I've got kicked, I just hey, got, I came back, out got kicked back in and I'm like, I'm trying really hard. I'm yeah, just, sorry uh, about that. We're not sure we got kicked out. So do apologize. Yeah, I got, did you get kicked out too, Andy? We all did, unfortunately. So oh, apologize. okay. So it wasn't just me. It wasn't yeah. just you. It was everyone. Yes. Well, the beginning of the thing, I was late earlier because my whole thing froze up and I had to restart my computer. And so I was like, I, I got it, came in in the middle of uh, Peter's uh, thing about Google Slides. Oh, it's all good. Um, it's just me, Peter, causing trouble. Um, I just had a quick question about the Buddy app. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, downloaded it, but when I opened it, it asked for an email and password. Yep. Yes, so there is also a link to create an account. So um, it's a free ver so it's a free account. You just need to set up your account. Where if you well, go how to, how do I get to that link? So are you using um, Voiceover? Or are you using what? What are you, are you using iOS or is it Android? It, oh, it's 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 an iOS. It's an, on my iPod on my iPad. Yeah, so you'll have a create account option right there, Corey, and you need to maybe create. I didn't did I not go down far enough? Yeah, or something yeah, on the you screen? need to. Yep, okay. you need to go to create account and then you'll you'll put in your email and your password and you'll be able to get you'll be able to get in. Okay, cuz it didn't show me it didn't show that on the screen. I just think maybe I didn't scroll down. Yeah, you probably need to scroll. It's there for sure, I promise. I know it's there. So it's okay. done. You need to create and then it and then it will let you in. 
Okay, I was just wondering, like, like wait a minute, what account? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. nope. Yep, you're going to have to create an account, and then you can log in later, or you can um, log in on a different iPhone or iOS device or something like that. So. Okay. Um, as far as the, um, the whole thing with Gmail and Keymail, um, my students finally on Keymail, thank goodness. <laughs> um, but my, we have another student who's using a Braille note and are you still recommending that Keymail is still um, more user friendly than the actual Gmail? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure where we all got dumped because I was totally muted and just on a roll, but I was showing <laughs> how, how Keymail is just, you don't have that same level of functionality. Okay. Uh, I mean, Gmail, I'm sorry. You don't have that same level of functionality because you lose all of those Braille shortcuts. Um, okay. You know, when you're, when you're using Keymail, you have all the Braille first shortcuts and it's built for that Braille user. If you're unable, it's not that you cannot use Gmail. You can, you just have to do a lot of exploring and it's a third party app. So we're not, you know, tech support and, and others, they're not going to be able to help you with that third party app piece. You're going to have to do some, some wandering around and, and trying to problem solve through it. So uh, if you're able to use Keymail, the benefit there is you have all those shortcuts. It's very linear and it's, it's built for that blind person. Yeah, and I've, I've noticed that with my students, been a lot more handy having him on the, a key mail after, you know, fighting it for so long. Right. But I just need to know if that's what I need to pass on to, because I'm, yes, I'm not the VI teacher for this other student who's using it. Sure, sure. And so I just wanted to know what, what, what if that was still the recommendation that key mail is still the user-friendly version. Absolutely. Thanks, Corey. Okay, let's go on to, um, I don't know, uh, Peter, I don't know if you wanted to quickly go through any of the Gmail again. Where, where did I get kicked out? I don't even know where we got booted. Uh, so it was just when you started to go to um, WebView, when you was talking about coming out of the WebView and then in, in WebView. Oh, I man. Oh, I was on such a roll. Um, <laughs> we can go I, back sorry, to that. Guys, I mean, that might have been me. This is Arlinda. That might have been me. There's another meeting at one. Sorry, go ahead. I'll tell everybody to wait on the, uh, for the other one. There's go another ahead. webinar admin at one or a webinar. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I told okay. everybody to wait. Please go ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, should we, should we just quickly go through some questions? Uh, yeah, let, let's take questions. I'll do the Gmail thing again. Uh, we'll do it again next week or something. I'll, I'll totally get it. But yeah, we definitely got booted. So we will, <laughs> uh, we'll take some questions for anyone who might've rejoined. Uh, one that I saw, and I don't know um, who's there, you know, if, how many people have re-jumped re on, but uh, the, the question about um, us supporting 365, you can absolutely use exchange accounts and Keymail. There was a question that I saw about clicking hyperlinks in Google Slides presentations. Um, in order to click a link, you're going to have to do that. There's a long-winded way to do it in PowerPoint. Google Slides does not have a way for us to activate hyperlinks at this point. Um, something that we definitely have made Google aware of. Um, it's also true to an extent in a Google Doc. Um, so we need to work with them in terms of things being view only and non-editable and how we can access those links. So it's, uh, it's, it's something that, um, that, we will, that we'll work with um, in terms of getting, you know, trying to make that happen. But as of right now, you're going to have to either have the link sent to your student separately uh, via email or you're going to have to get it into some editable sort of form so they can click on it in an email message or, or sending it to them in another way. Uh, what else we got, Andy? Let's do a couple and then we're gonna have to jump. Sure, yes. Yeah. So we have, um, how can you read Google Slides created by another person if the slides are online? So you would have to, that's a great question. If you have a Google Slide, someone would have to share that with you. Um, and the person who shared that with you would have to then, you know, you, you would open that in slides. So somebody shares the Google Slides presentation with your Google account, you open it in slides, and then you can look at all of those thumbnail uh, views, which, which, you know, which I had in there as well. So you would be looking at those thumbnails, if that makes sense. Cool. Okay. Let's go on to a uh, live chat. We have Mary Carla Hayes. Mary Carla Hayes, hello. You're Can unmute. you hear me? There Absolutely. we go. Go ahead. There we go. I guess I was still muted. Okay. Um, hope this isn't off the subject, but 
I'm just a brand new Braille Note Touch user and I am just overwhelmed. But anyhow, um, it's a Touch Plus and I'm curious, I have a, a, you know, a um, Gmail address set up, but I'd like to add my POP3 um, Verizon address as an account. And I was wondering if there was a way, somebody at Tech Support intimated that I might be able to do this is it is a pop three account but i was wondering if i could set it up for imaps on the touch plus but leave it as pop three so that i could take messages off the server individually that's what you're I'd going like. to have a very tough time with that uh because what will happen is they'll start to interfere with each other i think in today's just today's landscape IMAP is going to try to synchronize across devices. So you can't have IMAP on one device. You can't kind of pick and choose between IMAP and POP3 because it starts to, the old way of POP3, it would actually download those messages and they wouldn't synchronize across devices. Whereas now IMAP synchronizes everybody's connected devices because we're all in one ecosystem. So you, you will have all sorts of finicky behavior if you're trying to run IMAP on one device and pop three across you know, your, your account. What I'd like to crazy. do with the Touch Plus is when I'm away on a trip, just pick things off the server that, and you know, delete them off the server if I don't need them, but leave them up there to go back to the computer when I come back. And that's the only reason I'd use it. And you'd say that wouldn't work? No, no, you can't pick and choose in that sort of manner. Uh, there's no device today. So it cut the same thing with an iOS device or anything. It's all going to sync. If you wanted to just use pop, you could, you could certainly find a way to do that with Verizon, um, but you can't have IMAP and then pop and then IMAP and then pop. You're just, it's just going to create all sorts of conflict across your device. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay and yeah, good. by the way, I mean, this is definitely, this sort of webinar is not for the faint of heart. If you're just beginning, this one would make you feel like your head is spinning through all sorts of worlds. This is, uh, this is way up there. You definitely want to look through the HW Buddy app, or I would strongly suggest looking at the Mystic Access audio tutorial and starting from square one. This well, that's is what definitely I'm doing. way up there. So but this awesome. email, the Gmail actually made sense to me. That's anyway. what I'm talking about. Good. 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 Uh, thank Thanks. you so, so much. So what is the Buddy thing anyhow? That's an application for smartphones and, and iOS devices and Android devices that will have oh, all okay. of the resources in one spot. Okay, thank you so thank much. You. Good seminar. Thank you. Good. Okay, so we just have a question. Um, I'm looking for an app that allows me to provide remote support or control of the Plus from a PC to help students in this era of distance learning. Um, so this, this I know that obviously we use in Zoom and TeamViewer. Um, potentially you can, you can certainly view the screen. As, as to control, you're very limited on the control. Um, so if you even have the full TeamView account, you're unable to control the actual device. You can right. uninstall apps. Um, it allows you to uninstall apps. It will allow you to set up additional Wi-Fi connections. Of course, you need to be on, a, on a, an internet connection to establish the, uh, the, the remote session. But if there is another internet connection that you want to assist them on, you can actually do that as well. You could send files. You can grab files and you can create folders. But as far as take the full control, unfortunately, that's not possible. Okay, uh, let's go to another quick, uh, just raise their hands. We have, we've had these people on before. There's Judy. Judy, hello. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning, how's it going? Good, so, okay, so I was the one who had the question about the uh, Google Slides and, and um, you know, a link in there. So thank you for answering that. But I, um, I raised my hand because I wasn't sure if those were all going to get deleted when we came back in. But I do also have a question about uh, key mail. So um, my students and I are all having trouble with key mail crashing a lot. So when I called Humanware, they said, well, you can clear the data. And we have done that. But in it, at home, now, this, I thought, well, maybe it had something to do with the school server. But now we're home and uh, it worked last week. I didn't have any trouble. And all of a sudden this week, yesterday and today, app is crashing all the time again. Do you have any idea why that's, and is, is clearing the data my only option? What I would do, work I mean, I, but so I I've seen, it. I've seen it randomly from time to time uh, where that will happen. But what I, th what I think you should do, I would try to reset your router at home. Um, anytime I have, so even, and 
you know, I have lots of, I was, I was on Tech Talk last night and I was talking mm -hmm. about how from time to time, even with, with all of the things that I have in my house, I have to, res I had to do it this morning. I have to reset my Wi-Fi network at least once every two weeks at this point. And I noticed that if I don't, I will get intermittent data packets kind of pushing and pulling and things just not going through properly. And I, I, I believe that that could be what's going on. I would try to reset your router. Um, mm -hmm. If that's something you can easily do, it's many people the message, kind of have the all-in-one routers, but if you're getting it, that it keeps stopping and that you need to open yes. it again. And you yes. know, that's, that's definitely something to do um, generally with a network side of things. So it's okay. trying to refresh and it's not refreshing and it just kind of gets caught up in itself. So I would try that. Um, I'm not saying that'll fix it or not, but definitely worth <laughs> a try, especially if you had consistency last week and then this, you know, it's not like, the Braille note decides one week it's going to work and the next week it's not and the next yeah. week it's still again. Um, right. So it, it generally would be something to do with the network side and just its ability to synchronize with the server. So okay. give that a try at least and see if that will rectify it and just see how long it does. Okay. Um, and we'll know for sure. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Judy. Judy. Okay. All right. We'll do two more and then we got to let the admin. Yes, we have. Right okay. Leave. We have uh, Oscar. Oscar Schwedo. Hello. All right, rock hi. and roll, Oscar. Um, hi, I'm I'm 11 years old. I'm not sure if you, but I'm very interested in technology. I love your meetings, and I have the question: Is there like any shortcut for the uh, Google slide? Because I was doing the um, PowerPoint, when I'm using the PowerPoint, you mm -hmm. know, is there like any uh, keyboard shortcut on the Brown Note Touch Plus? There are not, my friend. So there are no shortcuts because, again, it's a third party app. So we don't have any Braille or, you know, shortcuts that we can use in those third party apps. Uh -huh. Not to say that we won't as we go forward. Andrew, you know, we're always looking at what can we be mapping or how can we build some better access into third party apps. But um, there's no shortcuts for things like switching slides or, you know, quickly editing or, you know, it's all about first letter navigation and knowing how the app is built so you can quickly get to different parts of the screen. But there are no Braille shortcuts. Not yet. You know, like, for example, um, um, because, you know, um, let's say I'm doing the PowerPoint um, and, like, I want to send to the... Um, Braille teacher, or let's say, for example, yeah, I'm in the Word document, yeah, mm -hmm. and I want to copy into the PowerPoint, but I want some text to be in this slide and that slide. Like, okay, I want some text to be in slide one, some in slide 18, yes, mm -hmm. those slides. Uh, so, how do I do that? You would have to, you would have to use either, you're going to go in the edit box and use enter with S to start and stop your selection, and you'll take yeah. the box of text, uh -huh. and then you would select slide one, find the object where you want to put that text and put it in, and then you would have to find slide seven or ten in the thumbnail view, select it, and then find the object and put the text in. It's going to take you some time, but you, you can definitely do that. You can certainly move, it's just that you're not doing it with, with kind of one touch shortcuts there. You, you could copy text out of keyword and paste it with backspace V and stuff like that, but you want to do some wandering, my friend. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Thanks a ton, Oscar. Thanks, Oscar. We're going to have to move on to the next, uh, next one more. Thanks. Okay, uh, we have uh, one more. It's Christian. Hello, Christian. Peter, can you hear me? There you go. Andrew can hear you too. Yeah. <laughs> So I noticed, well, I've actually, I've actually got a couple things. So I noticed a bug here where whenever I hit the power button and I'm on the lock screen, 12, 12, Tuesday, April the 7th. it says Tuesday, April the 7th, whenever I'm on the lock screen, but then whenever I press enter with D for the day, the 4th of July, 2020, it says oh, the day. You're gonna to have to go into Android settings, and you're gonna to have to go into your, into your you're gonna to have to go change the date in your, uh, in your clock. So you need to go in and, and get that date set, my friend. And also, and also, one thing that I know that Gmail can do with my school email is, is, is 
it can basically pull the email addresses of like the different teachers and the different staff members and things like that from the Seguin school districts like directory. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to be in my contact list. Is there any way that I can like do that with Keymail also? So what Keymail does, Keymail should look at your inbox. It should look at your sent folder and it should look at your contacts list when you're pressing space with backspace and E. That's the only way. It's not going to look at a network drive, right, Andrew? Correct. That is right. So that would be why it won't do that, but it should be looking at your inbox, your outbox and your contacts list. So there, but nope. Unfortunately, Christian, there's no way to access those sort of, th there's no t direct tie into what's on the network. Cause yeah, we have the same thing at humanware, but, uh, but you can't, can't pull it on the, on the, on the Braille note side of things, but it's a great question. All right, friends. Uh, this has been an honor, uh, a, a slightly interrupted version of uh, humanware live. We will revisit the Gmail thing at another point in time in terms of, I know, I don't really know where I got cut off. So I need to look at where I, where we kind of slipped and got booted. Um, but we are, we are going to be back on Thursday looking at Braille displays with iOS um, and also with, uh, with, with screen readers. So I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll do some JAWS, some basic commands in there as well. Um, we're gonna be looking at the Brilliant Braille displays that will also apply to the Braille Note Touch or Touch Plus being used as a Braille display as well in general. So we're gonna look at some basic commands um, and give you a sense of how you can use, because it's very important to use the PC and we want you using a Braille display or Braille output when you're using your PC. Andrew, thank you for being here. Yes, and stay tuned, everyone. Um, as we go into next week, uh, we are looking at some giveaway prizes. So stay tuned. Keep coming to our webinars. Um, pass on the word to attend our webinars as uh, there could be some prizes. Yeah, prizes are always good. And everybody <laughs> likes prizes. And we will, uh, they, they won't be boring, I promise. No boring prizes. <laughs> Until then, everyone have a good day. Keep safe and uh, speak to you on Thursday. Thanks, friends.